I would like to just take a deep breath and just center myself. I don't know if anybody else needs to do that, but just to kind of calm ourselves and center ourselves, all the business and all the urgency and all the rushing around, maybe just to center ourselves for a moment of silence. I'm gonna begin with the bidding prayer. Beloved in Christ, be at this Christmas Eve our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our covenant unto the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all people, and for unity within the church. And because this of all things would rejoice God's heart, let us remember the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, those without a home, those without a country, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, our elders and the little children, and all those of other faiths and strangers we meet along the way. Lastly, let us remember before God all those of blessed memory who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light. That multitude reunited with their Lord, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom, in our Lord Jesus Christ, those departed and we are forever one. Let us give thanks and praise to our Creator, our Redeemer, our sanctifying Spirit, our most holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and death. Bit of a Christmas miracle that we have a full choir the way we do. It's kind of a, an old choir and a new choir all together, and uh, half of them are Fakandinis yeah. <laughs> or a friend of a Fakandini. Um, so let's give them a round of applause for all the wonderful singing they do.
and it couldn't work without Chip and without Claudia. We should thank them for all the work that they do for this as well. This is the part of the evening where we see what is most beloved to us, those faces that are illuminated by each of their candles.
we have about a dozen people who are watching on Zoom. So just everybody to say hello, people on Zoom. They're waving back. As we face another difficult winter, let us try to take strength in the fact that we know the things that we need to do to keep ourselves safe. We know the very simple procedures that we need to follow. And the only thing we need in addition to that is a spirit of unity to work together, to cooperate with each other, to keep each other healthy. And that's our prayer tonight. Lift up your candles in defiance of fear and a statement of courage and unity. The good news according to Luke, the second chapter. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God through all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them, the gospel of the Lord. Hello, Ellie. Hello, Gary. Hello. Hello, Quell family. Hello. There's a cartoon that I saw in a magazine that I like to read. A person was sitting at a desk and another person comes walking in and as they, as the person is walking in, they turn and they say to them, I can't remember if I'm working for a home or living from work. The way we are living today, we are juggling this idea of when do we work and when are we at home? And sometimes we can feel like, where are we right now? And sometimes we're not really fully in either one of those places. It's a problem that dawned with the advent of email and cell phones, but now with offices closing and people working from home, going to school at home, it really blurs that line between when you have your time and when you have time to be at work or at school. This is a world of our own creation, and yet it doesn't necessarily work for us, or we haven't yet figured out how to make it work. Also, we increasingly realize that the world was working pretty well before we decided that we had to remake it. Right now is a hard time. Pandemic restrictions make it hard. Illness makes it scary. 
economic instability makes it feel like the floor might fall out from under our feet. We have remade the world to make it comfortable, stable, secure. And many of these efforts don't take a long-term view or don't consider how others are impacted by the changes that we make for ourselves. And many of these efforts just backfire with unintended consequences. With all that's going on, you may be feeling a little bit like Christmas is ruined. Maybe you're saying COVID ruined Christmas last year, we couldn't get together, and now all these restrictions can make us feel so anxious, depressed. We can't enjoy the things we normally enjoy, or the normal things have been switched out on us. Is COVID ruining another Christmas? Or maybe you've got a different issue that's messing with you. There's a bunch. The political climate. You're not looking forward to seeing that relative who watches a different news channel than you. Or maybe the economy, your sector is not bouncing back. Maybe climate change has you worried. Maybe you lost someone this year. Someone you were looking forward to seeing tonight or tomorrow. Or maybe you lost someone two years ago or 10 years ago and you're missing them. Christmas can be hard when you've lost someone or if your year just didn't go very well. If you're having a hard time, you shouldn't beat yourself up on top of that by saying, I should be having a good time, it's Christmas. Not all of us are good at what to say when we see someone struggling. Sometimes we try to cheer them up or tell them to look on the bright side. We should be careful not to minimize how anyone is feeling, not to think or talk as if their feeling could be cleared up easily by a glib remark. That can make them think that we see their problems as minor. I don't wanna say anything that tells you that you are feeling the wrong way at Christmas. Christmas, or the Christian faith for that matter, should not be about how you ought to feel. Christianity should not be about how you have to be happy. You have to be brave, or you have to be trusting. There's a bunch of Christmas movies that make believing into a requirement. They kind of shame someone or punish someone who doesn't believe. If you like everything else about that movie overall, just consider whether or not that's a good message, especially for someone who's having a hard time believing at this time of year or any time. That theme of needing to be the kind of person who believes goes back to movies like Miracle at 34th Street, lots of Christmas movies. Polar Express, the idea that belief is important or necessary or a sign of a good person. To me, that's not what Christianity is about. Some litmus test for who's a good Christian or how good of a Christian you are. If we are struggling to believe, struggling to feel okay, there's nothing wrong with that. And God is right there with us in that feeling, seeing how we feel, hearing what we're saying, shedding tears with us, voicing our doubts. Your feelings are valid. Your doubts are more than valid. They're a sign that you are thinking. We shouldn't make Christianity into some contest. The disciples we know were rivals with each other. Jesus has to set them straight. If you want to follow me, don't put yourself first. Don't step in front of anyone. Your Christmas can't be ruined unless there's only one right way to feel at Christmas. You might feel bad that your troubles won't disappear. You might feel worse that now you're missing out on Christmas. Christmas shouldn't make you feel that way. It can be difficult at Christmas. It can be hard this time of year, this year especially. 
But Christmas, as you read the story, there's all kinds of feelings going on in that story. They were having roller coasters of experiences. So Christmas, the story, has so many ways to feel. It is so complicated in its feelings, in its meanings, and how it would have felt for the people living at the first time, the first Christmas. Feeling sad is a valid thing to feel at Christmas. You're not letting anyone down. If your Christmas seems like it's ruined, there are many other people having a tough time. You're not alone. Not to mention that couple trying to get a place to stay in Bethlehem because Caesar says they need to go to their family's hometown. And then having Herod out to get their child. Displaced from Nazareth, refugees from terror fleeing to Egypt. Christmas can't be ruined because there's no right way to be. There's no right way to feel. Christmas can be sad. Christmas can be happy. A mix of both. We should feel like God understands how we're feeling. And God is not telling us how we ought to feel. If we're feeling lonely or missing someone so much that it hurts, that's our heart aching from love. It's a beautiful part of love. It's not a feeling that we like, but it's not a wrong way to feel. If we are having a good Christmas by the usual measures, we should still be able to take into account those who aren't. To see that as a part of the full picture of Christmas. It's not Christmas if we're not thinking about the difficulties that others are facing. That evening prayer two weeks ago, we talked about joy, the difference between joy and happiness. It's the difference between a happiness where you forget your troubles and only think about something currently making you feel good, and joy, which takes all into account, the good, the bad, our situation, our neighbors, and sees a larger perspective of people living and feeling and trying their best and sees a beauty in that. All the things we feel in life, being alive to the world, A beauty in people dealing with big life events. Seeing that from a broader perspective, finding yourself in a difficult time, imagining you are looking back on it from a better time. Seeing someone else struggling and remembering that we were there once too, or we will be one day. I heard someone say the other day they don't believe in self-care. Meaning that making sure that you're taking care of yourself means finding other people who can help us, letting other people help us, finding people who support us, who hear us, who see us. We should know that God is there ready to help us. And that help will look like one of us, maybe. God's help might look like a neighbor bringing a casserole or a doctor diagnosing a physical or emotional condition or an unexpected change in plans that sees no value at first. Christmas doesn't have to be white or jolly or jingly. We just need to stop and hear the message of the angels about certain shepherds who were keeping watch over their flock that dark, silent night all those ages ago. Shepherds who went and saw a babe, and then they made it known abroad. There's all kinds of feelings in that story. God is connecting to all the ways we feel. They all come from God. And for that, the shepherds glorified God and praised God. And now for the blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us.
May the Lord look upon us with mercy and grant us peace. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry